I wanted to show you my latest geocache idea. Uh, for this one, I wanted to do something a little bit different. I'm basically, m the majority of the caches that I have out there right now are just traditional, uh, you know, ammo cans or whatever with a nice little hike uh, out in the woods. So I wanted to do something that's a little bit multi, a little bit puzzle, and a little bit technical. Uh, what I wanted to do was incorporate something with an Arduino and make it very electronic as well with a field puzzle type of aspect to it. Now there are going to be at least two stages in a multi-cache. Uh, there could possibly be more just depending on how involved I want to get. I haven't quite decided that yet, but there's two key pieces to it. The first one is this box here. This is going to be inside an ammo can or another lock and lock or something. Uh, it's sealed shut so it can't actually be opened because of all the electronics that are inside. And what you'll do, you can see there's a 9 volt connector here. And I'll make it abundantly clear on the cache page that it does require a 9 volt battery so people will have that with them. You plug it in and the screen comes on and it'll display a little text of some sort. It's also going to show some coordinates and it's also going to finally give a little bit of a hint at the end. It's something about a rhythm or something along those lines so that people remember the beeping that's here. As you can hear it beeps in a specific pattern and the light blinks with it as well. Um, I should have put the light on top but for whatever reason I didn't and I don't feel like changing it now so it's gonna remain there. This will go on basically showing the same text and everything and beeping until essentially the battery runs out. So once you remember that, write down the coordinates, then you head out there, you'll find this ammo can, which on the outside looks just like a normal ammo can uh, that you would find until you open it up and you see that there's another lid on the inside. You can see here there's two LEDs, little handle and another 9 volt connector. These red wires are not going to be there. That's just there temporarily because uh, I haven't taken them out yet. Uh, so like I said you won't see those. So the cashier would come along and they would connect their battery and nothing happens. But you have to remember back to the clue where it says remember my rhythm. Now in this prototype I don't have the rhythm synced up. I'm still working on that. I haven't decided what I want to use for the actual rhythm, so when it's out there in the wild for real, um, the rhythm that you hear on the first box is going to be the rhythm that you actually have to tap on the top of this. So just ignore that this is a different rhythm, like I said. See the green light flashes or comes on and it unlocks. So you can get in there and get the goodies. And after a few seconds, the lock goes back to its locked position. So you can't get in there. And if you get the rhythm wrong, it flashes the red light at you to let you know. So that's essentially what I'm going to be doing with this. Uh, I hope to put that out soon. I'm not sh quite sure when. I've already got permissions for at least two of the locations. Hopefully, like I said, I can maybe come up with some others. Uh, there's a few other tweaks that I need to do with this as well. For those who are curious about the inner workings of the geocache, um, essentially what you see here is an idea by a guy named Steve Hofer, or Hoffer, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Uh, he had originally come up with an idea for a secret knock door lock, and that then he changed into a secret knock gumball machine, which was published in uh, Make Magazine, I believe it was volume 25. I'm not positive, but I'll include that in the description. What I did is I changed it around just a little bit, tweaked it, um, and also repurposed it into a geocache. So what I've got, all of the electronics are here uh, behind this box. Uh, yeah, I've sealed it off, and this is actually going to be locked so that no one can get in there, uh, so they don't uh, accidentally get wrapped up in the wires or damage anything to uh, ruin it for any following caches, but it also allows me in here uh, just in case I do need to do any kind of maintenance. So when we open this up, the first thing you see is a lot of wires. The wires are way too long on this. Um, I wanted to make sure that they were long enough, but of course I 
made them way too long and I didn't feel like cutting them down and resoldering them and going through all of that so I've just left them kind of this mess here. This board that you see is the heart of the electronics. We've got a uh, AT Mega 328 chip on here and a 5 volt regulator. Uh, basically the 5 volt regulator is because it was just easier to have geocachers carry a 9 volt battery rather than multiple double A's or triple A's or have to take them out of their GPS or whatever. Um, but I had to then bring that power down from 9 volts to the 5 volts that the AT Mega requires uh, and I didn't want to burn it out. One little feature here is this button. And what this button will do if I do if I decide that I want to change the pattern on this, I can do it right on the fly. You just press in the button, tap out a new pattern, and it'll actually change the code so that uh, the new pattern then will open the lock. Everything here is run through a relay. So essentially, when you get the knock correct, it opens up the relay, which then takes power from this 6 volt lantern battery to trigger the cabinet lock that's on here. Now, the cabinet lock, which is in the top of the lid, is actually a 12 volt lock, but I found it works fine with 6 volts. It doesn't open quite as quickly or as powerfully, but that doesn't really matter, um, and it allowed me to have a little more space in the bottom of the cache without having to have a 12 volt battery or two 6 volts connected together. So what you can see here is the back side of the two LEDs and then the battery connectors right here. This is actually a piezo and instead of actually producing sound this is used essentially as a microphone to detect the knocks. And then of course we've got the cabinet latch that I was telling you about which opens and closes uh, of course to lock the lid. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I wanted to show this. I know it essentially spoils my own cache, but uh, that's fine. Uh, you know, I think there's a lot to be said about sharing, and you know, this is all open source kind of stuff, so I don't claim to have any rights to it. So if you want to copy it, feel free. Uh, if you have any questions, please uh, don't hesitate to contact me, and I'll be happy to try to answer them. Thanks a lot, and happy caching.